going to do is uh, we're going to do a couple things today. Um, we're going to do a little bit of canning. Um, I just cooked a couple of chickens, whole chickens. Uh, I have the chicken meat here. Um, I didn't show you the actual cooking of, the, of, of making the broth um, because that's pretty straightforward. You know, you put the meat in. Um, we put in a miroquois, as the French would say, which is um, the three sisters sort of thing, the celery, carrots, and uh, onion. So that was put in there a little bit. Not much for spice, just some salt. Right now I'm just making a straight broth. So I have that here. I have a whole large pot of it. It's a, you, you, well, I don't know if you can see it now, but you will. And uh, the chicken is here. I have seven jars that have been sterilized, are nice and clean. Um, I have my ladle, and for some reason my funnel is not in with everything else, which is a bit of a mystery, but at any rate, we'll get it done. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reposition the camera here a little bit, and we're going to uh, we're going to start filling these jars. I'm going to put a little bit of the chicken meat in there, and then I'm going to top it off with the broth to about an inch from the top. Uh, and then I've got my uh, pressure canner. I have a very old All American that has been around with me for a very long time. You can probably see that it has the patina of age and use but uh, it's outstanding they do a great job now where I live here I'm not above a thousand feet above sea level so uh, I don't have to make any adjustments for uh, elevation or altitude uh, in terms of my pressure temperatures um, so there is a chart and I'll put a link to that somewhere here wherever it comes up um, that tells you um, all the different things that you might be you, you might be canning, pressure canning, what temperature you need to use and for how long, or what pressure in fact, and for how long you need to maintain that pressure. So I'll put that link in here. Anyways, let me get, uh, let me just start filling these jars and we'll get going. Okay, so the funnel has shown up, that's good. Wasn't that far away after all, so I'm going to take off this chicken is so soft after being cooked. I'm going to try to avoid, I can use the funnel for that as well, would be smart, wouldn't it? Uh, avoid touching the sides here. And we'll just put a few pieces in there. I'm really just making a broth here that I can take uh, and use in the future for any number of different things, whether I end up making a soup with it or just use it as a Oh, there's a bone, we don't want that in there, as a base in something else. And it'll stay preserved for, possi well, possibly months and months, it's hard to say. Most of the things, I try to make sure I rotate them uh, so that nothing sits too awful long. It's not necessarily that if it sits there it's going to go bad, but over a period of time, um, you know, it can start to lose a bit of its nutritional value, so, you know, we don't really want that to happen. And I have the, uh, well, you've seen my cold room, most of you. So, you know, it's dark, and, of course, it's cold. So, it's a good place to put it, and it works very well so far. There we go. Let's keep going here for another moment. And uh, there's a bit of a bone in there. Nope, not too bad. Now I have an awful lot of broth here, and I have at this point only seven jars set up. So the question is, um, do I get more jars out? I think what I'll probably do is just use that broth for uh, a soup or something right now. I like to make things up in large quantities, as you may have noticed. That way, I have uh, I, I can freeze some of it, but I certainly have meals where I don't have to cook every single day. But I still have I don't want all that skin. I still have a you know a supply of really good food rather than just I don't really go for just grabbing a sandwich or something. That's that's not me. I'm gonna be hotter than a pistol, that's for sure. That's good. Okay, let's start filling our jars.
I didn't really strain, in fact I didn't strain it at all, my broth here. I think the next time, and I, I should have known better, I should have broken the, the chicken up. I put it in in one big chunk, and I think I probably should have at least split it. Now I want to leave approximately an inch, so I want to get up close to the bottom of the threads there. I think that's just so that it actually touches the bottom of the funnel. That's, that's pretty much a good measure. You see the height of the funnel here, that's about an inch. So that's going to give me the measurement I need. As I mentioned uh, in the comment, and not the comments, but in my in uh, introduction there last week to my uh, last video, that there was going to be a, something of an announcement this week regarding the, the direction that the channel is going to take in the future here. Some of this soup with some uh, maybe some noodles in it or something or, or and some of those veggies or maybe some rice and some of those veggies and uh, some of that home baked bread that I did on the wood stove there a couple of episodes ago wouldn't that make a dandy meal if you're out at some hunt camp somewhere and it's cold and maybe you've been wet because you're out all day doing your thing and you can come home and, and in a very very short period of time you can have an awful nice warm nutritious Super good tasting meal. Yeah, there's still a lot of a lot of stock in there. So I'm gonna probably get some more jars. In the meantime, I'm heating up my canner here. It's on the burner beside it. I'm bringing that up to temperature. The uh, the soup is hot. It's still steaming hot. The jars, excuse me, just came out of the hot wash with a little bit of uh, strong detergent and a few drops of bleach in there. So that's nice and clean. This is coming up to temperature. I've got my seals in a little pot in the back there that you probably can't see. So I'm just going to reposition here and I'll bring you right back. And I'm just going to clean this off. That is certainly warm enough. Get that tidied up. Here, let's, oh, you're not supposed to be out there. Okay. Now we know we're going to get a good seal. Everything is going to be uh, hygienic and clean. We're going to probably use that again later. I think I'm going to go for more. So I'll get some lids and I'll start putting the seals and the lids on. So what we're going to do here, we're going to take our magnet, reach over the top, grab a lid, okay, grab two, set them on our jars. Take doubles, that's okay. There we go. Now I haven't got my canner up to a rolling boil yet because I don't, well, these are already awfully hot, but uh, I don't want to have any chance of breaking one, so we'll just uh, put these on. That's it there. Okay, so just, just not tight. Just oh, still there. That's, I knew there was an extra lid somewhere there. Okay, there we go. Now we're right. standing up nice. There we go, that's better. Now, I'm going to lower this down. And I'm going to, that's, I want the water up a little over halfway and it's probably just halfway. So I might add just a little bit more.
Okay, so what we've done is I've turned the temperature up to high and so now what we want to do is let it come up to temperature uh, as I said it's on high we'll watch our pressure gauge in this area here because we're using the gauge and not just one of the weights that sits on there we want to go for 11 pounds uh, because I'm not above a thousand feet above sea level if I was using the kind with just the weight on there it would be a 10 pound weight I'm not sure why but the gauge wants it slightly higher there might be some mechanical loss through the uh, operation of the gauge but either way we're going to get 11 pounds and then we're, as it starts to get up to 11 pounds we're going to adjust the temperature so that it maintains it and it's going to sit like that for 65 minutes okay so it's been about 15 minutes um, I just closed the valve here uh, I left it open just initially as it started to come up to a boil. Now if you look carefully here, well how well that focuses, but I'm up just about 10 pounds now. So I'm going to start dropping the temperature. I want that to hit uh, 11 pounds. I don't really want it to go over. It can go over a pound. That's not a big deal. So I'm at, uh, I'm at about 9 right now. Okay, 10. So I've cut the temperature back down to about a little over half and I'm just going to keep an eye on this and to see if it creeps up to the 11 or I may have to bring the temperature back up. Once you get to the 11 pounds uh, in this case which is what we're looking for that's when you start your timer for 65 minutes and you, you can't start from the time you first put it on it has to be from the time when you reach your your goal temperature or pressure if during the time of your 65 minutes anything happens, I'm going to have to turn that back up a bit, anything happens that uh, lets that pressure drop from, from 11, now maybe down to 10 briefly, but no, no more than that at the most. If it drops any more, you have to bring it back up to the 11 pounds and restart your time right from the beginning. So even if you've had it in there for 30 minutes, if you've lost your temperature, your pressure, you have to bring it back up to pressure and you have to, to start your clock at 65 minutes all over again. I know that seems a little unusual but that's what they say and it's just not worth taking the risk so you want to watch this fairly carefully. Once it stabilizes there I'm going to uh, I'm going to wait for 65 minutes I'm definitely going to keep an eye on it during that time not every minute but but frequently very frequently and I'll bring you back when we're uh, when we're ready to go to the next level okay so while we're waiting for this to uh, to do it 65 minutes we've stabilized the temperature I'm gonna take a couple minutes now since we've got some time and and talk just a little bit about the uh, the future of this channel starting um, you know maybe in the next month or so um, a couple of years well about two years ago when I opened the channel I, uh, like a lot of people, I opened it just so I could communicate and talk to the other guys who were producing the videos. And of course, after about six months of that, I got interested and the rest is history. When I named the channel Hunt Jack Wilderness Experience, my intention was to spend more time actually in the wilderness doing that type of thing. Um, it turns out that just about that time, there was a significant health issue that had to be dealt with and it kind of threw the whole thing sort of cattywampus there for a while. Um, it's good to say that that's done. Um, my intention had been to buy a piece of land. Uh, I'm not allowed legally to build on uh, public land here. That all got put on hold. But now I have done that. I've found a piece of property, I've purchased it, and it's in the very dead center of the middle of absolutely nowhere. Um, it is 40, 40 miles, 60 odd kilometers from the nearest little village. Uh, it is, well I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be generous and use the word road, sort of, loosely. <laughs> um, but it, there is a kind of a road into it. Um, I don't know that I can get my truck in there. Uh, I, I know I will certain points of the season, but certainly not necessarily all the season. 
Um, if it's been rainy or certainly with heavy snow, but if it's been rainy in the summertime where the beavers have been extra active, um, there's portions of that road that, that might not be very transportable, um, you know, even with a four-wheel drive pickup. So as you know, I have the four-wheeler and I am now at the, uh, out, actually I've already done this, um, to get an Argo because I think the Argo, because they float and, the, you know, they just, they'll go anywhere, those things. They're like a little tank. So, um, so that's in the project now. Uh, and what's going to happen is this is 160 acres of raw bush. There is absolutely nothing there. Um, the north property line goes runs east and west, but the north boundary is uh, 2,664 feet or something. Almost all of that is a great huge beaver pond. Uh, and just before you get to the northeast corner of the property, that tapers off and becomes a creek that goes off into the distance. So, my intention is to go in there and build uh, a hunt camp, basically, a cabin. The cabin will be uh, winter, winterized to the point where I can uh, stay out there late into the fall and perhaps even in the winter time if I just decide to go in there on a snowmobile and spend a couple of days I'm going to do that so uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here because it's still a little ways away and there's lots of time but that's kind of the theory of the thing so there'll be a, a little cabin maybe uh, and it, you know, wood stove you know all the basic things like that so part of the uh, initial part of, of all this will be the build um, when we get into the property right now there's six feet of snow um, we'll do a little bit of walking around and, and seeing what there is. I can't wait along the edge of that beaver pond to get some trail cameras out. Um, it is moose and bear paradise in there. It is bizarre. And they're, they're so far back in there, you know, 40 miles from the nearest town. It, you know, they're not, most of those animals will have never seen a person. So that should be pretty exciting. So anyways, that's, that's kind of the direction we're going to go. Um, uh, I'm not going to build it primitive in the sense that I will use my Argo, the chainsaw, um, probably my Alaskan chainsaw mill, uh, but the handwork will be done by hand. Uh, over the years, uh, one of my hobbies has been collecting old, old tools. So, uh, and as you know uh, from my videos, I've been making tools on my forge, handmade. So I have an old draw knife from um, 1832. Um, the fro that I made and all those other pieces. I still have to make myself a broad axe. Um, I have auger bits, the old-fashioned hand-turned auger bits. So it's going to be pretty cool. So I can't wait to take you along with me. So hang in there. It's coming up soon. As soon as I can get enough, uh, get rid of some of this snow and I can get in there properly, we're going to get started. Okay, so it's been maintaining about 11 and a half pounds all this time, which is really good. Uh, it's just about just about perfect. So I'm going to turn the heat off, but I'm not going to. I certainly am not going to open it because there's a lot of pressure under there, and then you can get badly burned. Um, the little valve here, I'm not going to open the valve either. Uh, I'm just going to turn the heat off. And I'm going to let this sit probably for 45 minutes to an hour, whatever it takes, to, uh, to reduce some of the heat so that the pressure will go down. Um, when I get down to a pound or two pressure, whatever it is, I'll probably open the little valve and, uh, and, and so that I can open the unit up. But uh, you don't want to do that initially. The, the sudden loss in pressure uh, could possibly break one of your jars, and, and you can imagine the mess that you'd have there. So, Okay, so it's been about an hour. We're back down to zero pressure. Just to be sure, I'm going to open that uh, just the tiniest bit, not enough to register. And that's it, we're safe to open. Okay, now this is still really, really hot and tight. Very hot. I'm going to set that over here for a minute. And let's bring that up. 
Now, as soon as the pressure goes off of it, that starts to boil a little bit. When you increase the pressure, you increase the boiling point. That's why the radiator in your car works. You put a 15 pound pressure cap on your rad, you better not touch that, that's hot. And it will raise the boiling point of the radiator by 3 degrees per, per pound. So rather than boiling at 212, it will boil at whatever, 240 or 50 or whatever the case may be. Not all pressure caps on rads are the same. That's why your car doesn't overheat. And there we go. Seven of them. That's just boiling away in there. We're just going to let that sit. I can see that these lids are already all pulled down, sort of concave, so we've got a seal, but we're just going to let that cool, and I can sit there for another hour. Now, you know, there's nothing to keep me from carrying on and doing another batch, but uh, we're not going to do that. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it for our canning session. Uh, even though it's off-season for canning, basically, um, when you're doing these things anyways, you know, you're cooking up your chicken or whatever, uh, and you're going to end up with a fair bit of broth, or at least potentially, why not, it doesn't take long, why not just can up, there's another seven jars that I wouldn't have had. So, um, waste not, want not, as they say, and they've all turned out good. I'm looking forward to having some soup base or some kind of stock base for these when I get going. Uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm looking forward to sharing the next phase of Hunt Shack with you uh, starting you know, sometime in the next month or maybe five, six weeks, depends on the weather. And uh, that should be pretty exciting, a little bit different, the way I really wanted to go in the first place. So thanks for sharing this with me. Appreciate you coming along. Everybody have a great day. We'll see you all down the trail.